The white, slingback pump dangled from Christine's fingertips. The fluorescent overhead lights made the iridescent shoes seem to glitter in her hands, making it difficult for Alec Prince to turn away. Alec grimaced as the girls continued to join forces in their effort to get him into Christine's shoes in a literal sense. Alec was embarrassed by the idea. He struggled to understand how things had gotten so far out of hand since he started to work at the office. He had never been an overly masculine man. He was short and thin with a waist that some of his female co-workers openly coveted. Alec hated his diminutive size. It was a contributing factor to much of the bullying he received throughout his childhood from his peers and his late, single mother. His poor efforts at fighting back had taught him it was better to take the abuse and hope that the abuser moved on to the next person. The girls in the office were different though. He felt that they were not trying to abuse him. To the contrary, they were all friendly to him. If anything, he felt that they were too friendly. While he was treated as a male interloper in the exclusively feminine ranks of the pink-collar clerical position when he first started on the job, the girls quickly sized him up. The more they watched him, the more certain they were that Alec was gay. The fact that Alec was willing to take a woman's job far below the ability level suggested by his college degree alone made him a curious figure in and of itself. That he was unable to meet the most determined stares of his female co-workers made it clear that he was at best, terribly shy. They had noticed that his eyes always darted from theirs and their bosses when he was put under direct questioning. He was eager to please, much more so than the other men in the office, who tried to take control of such situations instead. The two younger girls around his age soon realized that he was not a threat. He was too intimidated by them to even strike up a conversation. At first, Alec only talked to them when he was ordered to do something by one of them. As the girls grew more comfortable around him, however, their demeanor towards him began to change. They all started to treat him as one of the girls at the behest of the office manager. Alec felt relieved that he was being brought into social contact with them. It made him feel like less of a freak. That Alec participated in their conversations only made the girls grow more relaxed with him. They started talking about things that they never shared with men, not even the men they slept with. Alec found out far more about those men than he ever wanted to know. He struggled not to blush as the girls and women talked about their sexual relations with their husbands and boyfriends. Some of the girls got detailed in their descriptions about what their boyfriends liked and did to them. Alec felt himself slightly turned on by the conversations he found otherwise mortifying. He wished that he could be like those boys, but the girls were all sure that he wished he could be like them instead. He hated that he was perceived as being gay, but he knew that his initial denials had been treated as self-delusion and trying to protect himself. Christine clasped both of her shoes and said, Come on, we'll swap. It's not an even trade, Nadine, the office manager, said with a smile as she stared down at Alec. I'm not against trading down for a few hours, Christine replied. Hours? Alec asked, somewhat aghast. It'll be good for you to know what we go through, Morgan, the oldest secretary noted before adding, I've been forcing my feet into those babies for five days a week for the past 35 years. And it doesn't get any easier, Brianna added. Alec's head snapped at the morbidly obese woman who was nearing her 50th birthday. He knew that she could speak from experience. Come on, it'll be fun, Christine noted. Super fun, Erin said with her youthful exuberance from Alec's other side. Fine, Alec relented. You'll do it? Christine asked with a hopeful tone. Why not? Alec replied with a resigned sigh. All right, Morgan chimed in, enjoying the new diversion from the normal monotony of the day. Alec sat back down in his chair and began to undo the laces of his black oxfords. He slipped his feet out of the shoes and swapped the shoes for the pair of heels in Christine's hand. You got the better of this trade, Christine said while she held his oxfords away from her body. So, you say, Alec replied as he stuck his thin black sock-covered foot into the four-inch high-heeled, peep-toed pump. Alec gave the shoe a curious look as the girls started to laugh at his unfamiliarity with the feeling of the position his foot had been forced into. Brianna laughed as she teased, enjoy that feeling. That's every day of my life. And it only gets better, babe, Aaron joked. 
I'm not going to find out, Alec replied with confidence, sure that it was a one-time thing as he put the second shoe on. See, you totally won the trade, Christine said as she looked down at the Oxfords on her feet. Those aren't you, Morgan said while she gave Christine a shake of the head at the shoes beneath her pants legs. Those pumps are so Alec though, Aaron added to the girls' laughter. Laugh it up, girls, Alec replied as he tried to get back to work. Oh, we will, young lady, Morgan teased. You should pair those with a skirt, Christine added to Alec. I don't think I've got the right body for that, Alec responded with what he felt was understatement, as he was unable to meet her teasing eyes. Are you kidding? We've seen you in skinny jeans, Aaron countered. I'd kill for those legs, Morgan added. Funny, Alec replied. I'm being completely serious, Morgan responded. When are you ever completely serious? Brianna retorted. I can be serious. Not often, but when the time comes. I'm still waiting for that time to be on the clock, Nadine interjected while she walked by the bullpen of assistants on her way towards her office. The girls laughed before they turned their attention back to Alec. Brianna asked Alec to get a file from behind him. Alec wheeled his chair towards it, feeling the unusual pressure on just the balls of his feet as he did so. Once Alec got the file in hand, he forced himself to his feet. The girls stared at Alec as they saw the panic in his eyes as he felt unbalanced in his heels. The girls laughed at his expression and his clumsy, mincing steps while he made his way over to Brianna. You're not going to strut down many catwalks like that, Aaron joked. I wasn't going for grace, just survival, Alec retorted with a grimace. That's good, Morgan noted. Alec gave her a glare before she explained, you would have been setting yourself up for failure if you did anything more than that. Look, I've never worn a pair before, Alec said as he hobbled back towards his desk. It's not that hard, Brianna replied while she got up and walked a few feet. You just walk like that, Brianna added before she walked back to her desk and sat down. Well, you all make it look easy. It is, with a little practice, Brianna retorted. I'm not much into practice, Alec replied. You got to work for it to work it, girl, Aaron chided with a smirk. I'm not a girl. So, why bother? Alec replied. Oh, please, you would look right at home in a dress, Morgan responded. What? Do you think we don't look at you? Come on. If it wasn't for the lack of breasts, I'd bet anybody who looked at you would see a cute girl, Morgan answered to Alec's disbelief. No one would think I'm a girl, Alec replied, feeling that the truth of his words was self-evident. With that cute little nose and big eyes? Morgan teased. And the height, Christine added. And the thinness, Aaron further noted. I'm freaking jealous, Brianna interjected to the other girl's laughter. Alec shook his head while he took off the heels and told Christine he wanted his shoes back. Christine gave him a pout as she said, So soon? My feet were enjoying the rest. Maybe you should wear flats, Alec rejoined. Where's the fun in that? Brianna asked. There's some comfort, Morgan replied while she stretched out her legs. They don't catch your eye as much, Brianna retorted. Or a boy's, Christine noted. Aaron then interjected, speaking of boys, Alec? Yes? I have a friend that would be perfect for you. He's smart. Wow, wow, he? Alec inquired, appalled at the thought of dating a man. Of course. We've been over this. I'm not gay, Alec replied while he handed Christine back her heels and took back his Oxfords. The girls gave each other bemused glances as Christine thought, we're all so sure, dear. Any hopes Alec held that the girls would stop with the heels was soon eradicated. The next day, Christine strutted into the office wearing a short-skirted suit. She crossed one long leg in front of the other as she put her bag down on her desk. Christine smiled as she turned to Alec and said hello to him. Alec gave her friendly greeting as he continued to work. Christine leaned onto his desk and asked, Can you spot anything different about me? Alec gave her a curious look while he looked her over. Her hair was the same. He had seen her in the suit and heels before and there was no new ring on her finger. He shook his head before she explained, I got my legs waxed last night. 
Oh, Alec replied while Christine held her leg out so that the light would create a clear shine on them. Do you like it? It looks nice, Alec replied while his manhood swelled. You have to get yours waxed. They feel so great after, Christine said while she ran her hands down her legs, the way that Alec wished he was invited to on almost any woman. It's not really for me, Alec responded with blushing cheeks at the thought. Oh, come on, we both know you're not a bear. Alec continued to blush before Christine added, you've got to play the cards you've been dealt. Alec shook his head as Christine laughed at his flushed cheeks. She smiled as she said, you see, a man would totally find that cute. Now, if you had sexy legs to go along with them, hmm, you might be able to get a real man. What real man would go for me? Alec inquired in disbelief. There are some strong gay men. I've met a few. You almost wouldn't even know they were gay not like. Me? Alec asked with a scowl. Some boys just can't hide it, Christine noted. Is that true? Alec wondered. It was a familiar thought. He had been called so many gay insults growing up that he had lost track of them. It had made him doubt his sexuality before. If so many people were sure he was gay, how could he be so sure he was not? He wondered if his attractions were superficial, but he was unsure how deep it went. Christine left Alec with the thought. The girls continued to push him over the next few weeks. Alec pushed back when he felt he needed to, but let the girls have their fun with him as long as he felt it was harmless. The pot shots about his masculinity, however, were being internalized. He wondered how all the women he worked directly with had taken to him so easily as one of the girls. He struggled not to let it upset him. Christine could sense Alec's unease. She was certain that his self-repression of the girl he actually was born to be was the reason behind his clear consternation. She began to read about submissive boys and transgendered women. The signs seemed to be evident to her. He was able to connect with the other women on his level, but not the alpha women that worked in the ranks above them. He was intimidated by them in a way that men rarely were. He had taken to wearing heels with very little prodding on more than one occasion. His efforts to defend his masculinity were often overly defensive, hastily worded and delivered in a higher than normal pitch. He was also clearly dissatisfied with who he was. There was little doubt in her mind about the conclusions she felt were inescapable. After another day of getting Alec into her heels, Christine walked into the office and put her bag down. Alec gave her a glance as he greeted her. Christine then struggled to keep her plans a secret for most of the day until she got Alec alone in the kitchenette. Hey, Alec, can I talk to you for a moment? She asked. Sure, Alec answered having never refused any request from the girl before. I've been doing some reading about boys like you. Like me how? Alec asked with alarm. You know, the quiet, shy type. The shoegazers, Alec responded before averting his eyes from hers to glance down at his black shoes. Sure, Christine replied, continuing to humor him about what she meant. Sometimes, you need a push to come out of your shell. Are you finally going to push me over the edge? Alec joked. Maybe, Christine responded. The response made Alec's head snap up. His eyes rose to meet Christine's for a second before they darted away, as they always did. Christine gave him a saddened smile. The girl wanted to make him feel better about himself. She wanted him to know that the way his body looked at that moment did not need to be forever. It could be improved to the point of being the envy of most girls. Christine hugged Alec and said, I want you to spend some time in chastity. Okay, Alec replied in a slow manner. You'll do it? Christine asked, surprised by his immediate if slowly voiced acquiescence. No. I don't know what you're asking me, Alec explained. There's this thing called a chastity belt. What is chastity? It means you don't have sex. Oh, I don't need a belt to make that happen, Alec half-joked, half-admitted with blushing cheeks and a chuckle. Christine laughed at Alec's self-deprecating remark. She gave him another hug that made his member swell. Christine then said, it's a little more than that. It will keep you away from all sexual activity, including you know what. 
Alec gave her a confused look before he inquired, and I would want that why, exactly? It's going to give you time to start thinking with this, Christine answered as she pointed to head before she pointed down and added, instead of that. This conversation is going to a weird place, Alec replied with discomfort. Is it? Christine asked as she stopped pointing at Alec's manhood. Alec nodded a few times in silence. He could not believe that they were talking about his private area. He shook his before he broke the awkward silence between them, uh, yeah. This may be the weirdest conversation I've ever had with someone not talking about magical elves. Christine gave Alec a sympathetic smile and said, I'd really like you to give this a little try. Why? It would be good for you. What's in it for you? To know that I'm helping you. You know I love you. Like a brother, Alec thought, trying to hide a dejected look at how the girl he felt had become a friend liked him. I know, Alec replied before he added, I care about you too. Then, you know how you being so unhappy gets me. I'm not unhappy, Alec lied. Are you? I'm pretty happy. You never walk in here with a smile on your face. Christine countered. You know what they pay me, Alec deflected in response. You've got a degree that says you shouldn't even be here, Christine pressed. This was the only place that would hire me. That's because you're not confident. You don't look people in the eye. I'm a meek, I'm uninteresting, please continue with my life story, Alec added with more self-deprecation and a forced laugh while he tried to play off his true feelings as a joke. You're interesting. I can promise you that, Christine responded, trying to cheer Alec up as best she could. What are you trying to get at? I want to bring you forward. If you give it up, for a little while, I think it will put everything else in your life in focus. I don't know about this. Come on, don't you want someone else to be in charge for a change? Christine asked, playing on her research. Alec felt his member twitch. People had been in charge of him his entire life, but no one as beautiful as Christine. The thought of giving control of himself to her was alluring to him. Is that what you'd get out of this? Alec countered. I'm doing this to help, but, yeah, I can admit that I like the idea of being in control of you. You think if you control this? Alec asked while he pointed to his crotch before he added, you control me. It's true of anyone, Christine answered. It's not true of me. Well, why don't you let me lock you up then? Christine said with a smile, as she laughed at Alec's delusions. Alec's manhood swelled at the thought of Christine touching it, even for a fleeting second. He had never had a woman come near his manhood. He could not talk to a woman in a social setting, let alone seduce one. He would not even pay for a woman's company, fearing that such an experienced woman would laugh at his abortive efforts. Alec nodded his head before Christine said, Are you considering it? Alec nodded again as he answered, Yes. Is that a yes? You'll do it? Alec swallowed hard while he answered, Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you. You won't regret this, Christine said as she hugged him. Given my track record, I sincerely doubt that, Alec replied. We're going to get you on the right track for once, Christine retorted as she slapped his chest and told him that she would meet him at his place after work. Alec and Christine went back to their desks and finished their workdays. Alec spent the rest of the day thinking about what chastity would mean. He struggled to contemplate it. He was unsure how it would make him feel. As he drove home that night, he wondered how it would the device itself would feel. He gripped the steering wheel hard while he thought the whole scenario through. The thought of surrendering his sexuality to Christine made his manhood swell. He knew that there was little to no chance of Christine doing anything with him. He could not even find the nerve to ask a girl out, so it was not as if surrendering his manhood to Christine would be costing him new sexual experiences. It's going to be hers, Alec thought with a smile, even though he knew that she would have far less use for his member than he had. Alec fretted that Christine might take it too far. His mind raced as he parked and thought, what if she never let me come again? The thought horrified him, but he was mortified by the fact that the thought was making him hard. The idea of being at Christine's mercy was both alluring and unnerving all at once. What the fuck is wrong with me? 
Alec asked himself as he continued to drive. He tried to convince himself that the girl would never be cruel to him. It was not in her nature. Those attempts did little to calm his nerves as he parked. Christine's eager steps behind him into his apartment did nothing to put him at ease either. Christine looked around the apartment she had entered a few times prior. The walls were still adorned with little decoration. The furniture was minimal and non-adorned. The furnishings always told her that he was too afraid to let his natural effeminate choices decorate the place, while he could not bring himself to make it look like a man's home either. Are you ready? Christine asked as she stepped behind him. Alec shook his head before she said, Oh, come on. It's not like I haven't seen a dick before you. Alec blushed before he retorted, You haven't seen mine. There's nothing to be ashamed of about the human body, Christine countered, parroting a line she heard in her brief days in community college. Maybe not yours, Alec countered. Not yours either, Christine responded, unsure if she was lying. She had never seen anything wrong with her body or any of her lovers. Alec, however, was different. She had never seen such a small man naked before. She wondered how he would look. She wondered if it would it be different, and, if so, how? Do you have an ice pack? I have ice, Alec replied. Christine nodded as she went into Alec's kitchen and inquired if he had any sandwich bags that could be sealed. Alec opened a cabinet and reached for a bag before he handed it to her. Christine thanked Alec before she opened his freezer and began to fill the bag. Alec watched with a nervous look as she zipped the bag before she unzipped her purse. Alec watched as she removed two thin blue latex gloves. Alec gave a curious look before he asked, What is that for? For the procedure, she answered. The procedure? Alec inquired, not liking the inference that the word was forming in his mind. I have to touch you for this to work, Christine explained. Alec nodded with a sullen look, crestfallen that he would not feel the smooth skin of her fingertips touching his manhood, even for a fleeting second. He doubted that any woman would ever be willing to touch it. Christine gave Alec a look before she said with blushing cheeks, I'm going to need you to take off your pants. Oh, sorry, Alec apologized with haste while he began removing his pants as he long wished to do with a girl like Christine. He wanted her, but he knew that he was undeserving of her. He had not done anything to earn the love of a girl like her. He was sure that it was impossible while he thought about her descriptions of her muscular and tall boyfriend. It was the type of man that he could never dream of becoming. Alec's pants fell to the floor before Christine told him to remove his boxer shorts. Alec blushed as he began to comply with her order. He wanted to tell her no, but he lacked the confidence to say no to anything that any of the girls from the office had ever asked of him. The same thing held true as he removed his boxers. Alec's cheeks burned red as he stood before Christine with a limp manhood that she insisted on seeing. While he was slightly turned on by the sight of her, he was too humiliated to grow a millimeter, let alone an inch. Christine's eyes enlarged as she looked him over. She had rarely seen a limp member on a man before. If there was any doubt about Alec's sexuality it was gone. The man was completely flaccid with her standing before him in a low-cut top and a short skirt. She knew that she was going to do him a favor by disabusing him of the foolish lies he told himself and the girls about his sexuality. Christine reached down and pressed the bag of ice against his manhood. Alec let out a high-pierced shriek that made him blush further. Christine laughed before she said, It's not that bad. It's freezing, Alec countered with a shiver, even as he was relieved for the momentary modesty the icy bag provided. As her hand lingered over his crotch through the bag, Alec thought, I can't believe I'm letting her do this. Why can't I stop? I don't want this, do I? I must, but I can't. It's not right. I should just tell her no. Just do it. Why won't I open my mouth? After a few minutes of Alec squirming with blushing cheeks, Christine said, that should be long enough. Alec remaced at the sight of his shriveled penis while Christine moved her hand away from his crotch. Christine struggled not to laugh at the sight. She could not believe how small his penis was. It did not seem humanly possible given her prior experiences. She could see the dismay on Alec's face. 
As she snapped the ring on the base on Alex's flaxed dick, she tried to raise his spirits, I heard that a lot guys like a small dick. What about girls? Christine laughed before she patted his chest and said, we both know the answer to that. You tell me when you go for the guy with the small dick. Alec blushed. He was too humiliated by the sights that he knew that Christine could never forget to defend him from what he felt was justified and deserved criticism. Christine turned away from him for a second before she pushed a small tube over Alec's limp member. The tube snapped into the ring before she pressed down the small padlock to ensure that the tube and ring stayed affixed. There you are all locked up, Christine announced. How do you feel? Alec asked, unsure of how he felt. The expectation of the thrill of Christine being in charge of him had not materialized. Instead, he was merely mortified by how his body reacted to her and how it had to look to Christine. No wonder she thinks I'm gay, Alec fretted as he waited for Christine to answer his question. I love the feeling of control, she answered before she ordered, now, pull your pants up, uh, sorry, Alec replied, remembering himself as he hurried to bring the underwear and pants up to his waist. Alec felt uncomfortable as his manhood tried to expand in the device as his body warmth made it return to its normal size. Alec gave her a nervous look before he said, Christine, I'm not sure about this. Can you take it off? Not right now. Christine, please. I don't have the key with me. I left it at home. You have to go and get it. Alec, this is normal. Guys typically try to beg, plead, Bully, really anything to get out of it for the first few days. Days? Oh, yes. You have to spend at least a few weeks in it to really understand the full effect. Weeks? I'm not going to be able to masturbate for weeks. There's other ways for you to let it out. Try pleasing another. That will burn off your sexual energy. But I'm not dating anyone. Well, it's time for you to put yourself out there and change that. But what girl will? Stick to the boys. I'm sure you'll find one that's more than happy to put your mouth to good work, Christine said as she stroked his arm. The feeling made his manhood surge for a second. The crushing pushback made him wince before Christine said with a wink, I'll see you tomorrow Alec was frustrated the entire night. He wanted to masturbate. The feeling of Christine's hand on his crotch through a rubber glove and an ice bag was the most intimate sexual contact he had ever had and he could not even get a release to that meager memory. As Alec entered the office, he saw that Christine was already working at her desk. Alec walked towards her and Christine swung her chair out, showing him her sheer, black pantyhose-covered legs. What can I do for you, Alec? You know what I need. Where is the key? The key? Oh, I don't have that, dear. Where is it? Alec pleaded. It's somewhere safe. Very safe. Where? In my boyfriend's safe. Alec's jaw dropped as his stomach sank. He feared that she had told her boyfriend about what she had done while he asked in a weak voice, Why did you give it to him? He doesn't know what it's for, Christine replied with a smile. Well, you have to go and get it. I can't do that, dear. You know that I love you too much. What are you talking about? We're doing this for your own good. Who? Alec asked before he looked around and noticed that Brianna was smirking. Are you all on it? Alec inquired with alarm. In on what? Brianna answered with a laugh through a sly smile. Morgan cracked a grin as she said, I'll say it. Yes, we're all aware. Alec blushed as his shoulders slumped. Christine shook her head as she said, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Well, there's something to be embarrassed about, Morgan chimed in. Stop, Christine said with a laugh as Brianna joined in while Alec's cheeks grew redder. What are we talking about girls? Erin asked while she walked around the corner to head to her desk. Just our little, Alec. Erin smirked before she said, why? He's trying to get out. Well, if he just came out, we wouldn't have do this, right, Alec? Aaron replied, challenging Alec. What are you talking about? Alec inquired as he started to sweat. His stomach churned as he waited for a response, knowing full well what it would be. Alec, you've been telling us all that you're straight. 
We have eyes. We can see that you're not, Morgan replied with characteristic bluntness. It doesn't mean you're not a great person, Christine added, trying to lessen the impact of Morgan's words. But. We all love you as a friend. You're a great girl, Christine added, cutting off Alec's rebuttal. But I'm not a girl, Alec protested. You certainly join in like one. You work like one. You look like one, Aaron responded with a smile. I look like a guy. Only because of how you dress and wear your hair, Aaron retorted. What's wrong with the way I dress? You're pretending to be a boy. Boys aren't pretty like you. They aren't small like you. You were born to be a girl. That's why you fit in so well here, Aaron explained. Alec blushed in response. We're doing this because we love, Christine added. Alec shook his head. He wanted to shout as he muttered under his breath, Love me. I can't even touch. His cheeks went red as he was about to tell the girls he masturbated. He was sure that they knew and that they did it too, but it was not something he wanted to admit in the company of women. Christine nodded. They all knew exactly where he was going with his comment. Its obviousness was unavoidable under the circumstances. Christine smiled as she replied, Alec, I've done a lot reading on this. On what? Alec pleaded to know. On what depriving someone of an orgasm does to them. The longer you go without one, the greater the length that you will go to achieve one. Like what? Like finally admitting to us and yourself what you are? I'm not gay. Who said you were? Let's see what you say in a month. If I just say I'm gay now, will you let me out? Not after you asked that question, Morgan replied for Christine. Alec grinded his teeth as Christine seconded Morgan's comment before she added, you need detachment from it to understand what you are. I'm gonna go crazy. Once you climax, you no longer think about sex. The needs of your lover just vanish. Believe me I know what I'm talking about here, Christine rejoined. You will too, Brianna added as she looked at Alec. Alec's stomach wrenched at the thought of being an afterthought to another man's sexual appetite. Orgasms are addictive, Christine continued. Preach, Morgan interjected with a laugh. Morgan, you're not helping, Brianna said with a laugh. What I'm trying to say is that masturbating is like cheating your way through life. Why would you go out and date a man when you just think about it and not have to deal with what doing it in real life means about you? Alec was aghast. He had never masturbated to the thought of a man. He had always pictured himself as the man in his fantasies, even if in them he was somewhat larger and stronger than in real life. It also diminishes all that effort that you would have given the lover you should have had. I've never had. We know you're a virgin. You've been too awkward about all the sexual topics to not make that clear. Alec blushed, wondering if it was obvious to everyone else he encountered as well. He put his head down before Christine added, Now, what the belt gives you is an excuse to stay a virgin. You won't get to orgasm with someone else until they're generous enough to give it to you. What? It's about earning your right to come, Aaron added. Alec turned to Christine and asked, did you ever make your boyfriends? Oh, no. They wouldn't go for this sort of thing, Christine replied before trailing off. They're men, Morgan answered with the truth the two younger girls were too polite to state. You can have them, Brianna replied with her typical distaste for men that she had shown since Alec met her. Alec knew that she was divorced and could sense that she had a dislike for men dating back to her marriage. They're not that bad, Aaron countered. Hey! If Alec would like to fetch them beers, serve them and not be appreciated by them for a damn thing like the rest of you, then maybe you're right. Welcome to the sisterhood, Brianna retorted as she held up her coffee mug and smiled at Alec. Don't listen to her. Not all marriages are bad. I still love my husband, Morgan said to Alec, Christine, and Aaron. She knows what she's talking about, Aaron seconded Morgan's opinion as she turned to Alec. Maybe for a girl like you, Alec retorted. Even for a girl like you, it can happen, Christine countered. Alec shook his head before Christine added, when you channel all that pent-up sexual energy and go down on a guy, he's going to be in heaven. You're going to make him scream. No, 
Alec replied with a shake of his head, feeling sick to his stomach about what would earn him the right to regain control over his manhood. Yes. You will learn that sex for you doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your little thing, just like it doesn't always involve a girl's pussy, Morgan noted. Christine nodded as she announced, and that's the trick, dear. That's when you'll know that you're ready to have it taken off. That you're ready to be in control of yourself. Because you haven't been in control of yourself, you've just let everyone else push you around because you're pretending to be a boy. I haven't. Alec, you let us get you into heels. You let me lock up your dick. Please don't tell us that you've been the master of your fate. We're not slaves. Women are strong and we need you to be that once you transition, Christine added. Transition? You know, Christine insisted. No. I don't. You're going to be the best girl you can be when we're done with you, Aaron explained. Look, you're making a mistake. I don't want to be a girl, Alec pleaded. That lie will become clear to even you the longer you wear that belt, Christine rebutted. But... Christine shook her head as she cut off Alec's reply again, Trust me, by the time we unlock you, you are going to be a confident woman with a loving boyfriend that you're going to have pleased so well. How could I please him? No girl is ever as good with her mouth on a boy as a boy is. And how would you know that? Alec countered. Is a boy ever better on a girl than a girl? Christine answered. And how would you know that? Morgan charged. I've read things, Christine answered with blushing cheeks. Listen, I went to an all-girls school. I had plenty of friends who experimented because, hey, what else are you going to do? They're all married, now. I'm not judging, Morgan responded. But you weren't one of them? Brianna asked. Please, I was Miss Goody Two Shoes, Morgan answered. You were a goody goody? Aaron asked with a laugh. This isn't about me. This about, Alec, Morgan countered. The girls nodded before Christine said as she handed Alec a pair of black-pointed toe pumps to swap out for his shoes, you'll come to understand that this was for your own good. Alec shook his head as the girls went back to work before Nadine came over and assigned him a new task. Make sure you put on your heels, first, Nadine teased. Oh, God, who else knows? Alec fretted as he set about swapping his shoes for Christine's four-inch heeled, laser-cut micro-suede shoes. Over the ensuing weeks, the girls grew more determined to break Alec out of his shell. The girls decided that the first step was to bring him to get his first waxing. Alec was not enamored with the idea when Christine picked him up at his apartment to go. I really don't want to do this, Alec said. It doesn't hurt that much. So, it hurts? Of course, it hurts. Nothing that's good for a girl in the long run doesn't, but it gets better. How could it get better? Your body starts to get used to it. How could that possibly be true? Alec countered. The bulb of your hair is bigger than your pore, but waxing makes your hair finer and the bulb smaller. So, this is going to change me? Alec asked. That's the goal, and it's better than shaving your legs every day. I wouldn't know. You will if you don't come along. Do I need anything? No. I've taken care of everything. Just wear something light, loose and cotton. Why? Everything gets sore, a little red and swollen. You want whatever's touching you to be soft. So, I should get changed, Alec asked as he looked down at his jeans. I would recommend it. Alec nodded as he went into his bedroom. As he disrobed, he thought about what awaited him. His mind was preoccupied by Christine's smooth, shiny legs while he searched for loose-fitting, soft clothing. I can't believe my legs are going to look like that, Alec thought with a smile as he brought the gray hooded sweatshirt over his head. It won't, he retorted to himself while the smile left his face. As Alec's eyes lingered on his legs, he was unsure of which thought was true. His legs were thin and he thought, they could look sexy. Alec shook his head as he cursed himself for thinking that before he quickly covered his thin legs with a pair of loose, gray sweatpants. Trying to avoid thinking about it any further, he hurried out of his bedroom to see Christine. Alec held his arms out to the side as he asked, is this good? 
Christine shook her head and said, No, but it's good enough for now. Alec gave her a pout before he followed Christine out of the apartment. They went down to Christine's car before they drove to the spa. Alec went inside and signed in beside Christine. Alec gave her a nervous look as he asked, Are we going to be in there together? Oh, no. They don't do that here. It's all private. Why? Because we're going to be completely naked. What? Oh, come on. You had to know that. Somebody is going to see me naked. Jim fretted, completely unaware of what Christine had signed him up for. I've basically seen it all, honey. And there have been a few guys who have seen all of me. What's the big deal? It's a stranger and the lock. They're professionals. They see naked people all the time. It's part of their job description. But the lock, this sounds really awkward, Alec replied as he tried to keep his voice low. Oh, hun, everyone thinks that, the receptionist interjected, missing most of Alec's point before two staff members came to direct Alec and Christine into their private rooms. The middle-aged woman smiled while Alec entered the room. Alec struggled to force himself to reciprocate with a smile of his own as he feared what she would say if she found out the truth. The waxer introduced herself and said, You can take off your pants and underwear and sit down. What? Alec inquired with alarm. You're getting waxed. We can't wax through your clothes, the waxer noted with a comforting smile. Okay, Alec replied with a tremble while he began to undress. He felt nervous as he pulled away his clothing. He peered over his shoulder as he reached for his boxers and asked, Are you really okay with this? I've waxed plenty of ding-dongs in my day, sweetie. Alec blushed before he said, I have to warn you that I'm wearing something I can't take off. The woman steeled herself before she asked with a stoic expression, a chastity device? Alec nodded, surprised that the woman knew of such a thing. The woman nodded in reply before she said, You're certainly not the first, sweetie. Alec was relieved by the fact, even though it made him inquisitive. He kept those questions to himself, however, while he pulled down his underwear and started to lie on the table. Alec felt exposed as the woman walked around him inspecting her client. His heart raced as his body was covered only by a chastity belt that left little to the imagination. He took a few deep breaths as the woman applied the wax around his chastity belt. He was surprised to find that the wax felt good on his skin. It was warm and had a soothing feeling. This is going to sting, the waxer said before she ripped off the first strands. Wow, Alec exclaimed. It's not that bad. Ouch, Alec reiterated with a shake of his head. The girl continued to pull the hair around his crotch. Alec tried to make small talk as she worked, trying to get rid of the uneasiness and pain he felt. As the girl worked on him, she told, Don't worry. It'll be easier once you have the surgery. My friend told that this gets easier the more you do it, Alec replied, confused by her insinuation. It does, the waxer replied, deciding not to probe his transsexual transition given that he was avoiding discussing the issue. Once Alec's groin was waxed, he was turned over. Alec gave the waxer a nervous look as he asked, How bad is this going to hurt? Not at all. You told me the front wasn't that bad, Alec countered. Your butt doesn't have nerve endings the same way your groin does, the waxer explained. I guess that makes sense. How would you be able to go to the bathroom? Here, let me pull the first strip, the waxer interjected, tiring of Alex trying to rationalize her statement. That wasn't bad at all, Alex said as the strip was pulled away. No. This is the easy part, the waxer responded with a smile. What about my legs? Oh. That's not going to be so much fun for you, the waxer answered with a laugh. Alec nodded before the woman finished his rear. She then moved on to his legs. Alec winced while the strands were ripped out of his legs. Alec struggled to keep his audible yelps to a minimum while the girl finished his legs. Once the girl finished, Alec dressed in his sweats. He could feel that his skin was raw and was happy to have worn the soft clothing Christine recommended as he waited for Christine to emerge. Christine smiled at Alec as she exited her room. As she walked towards him, she asked, So, how do you feel? 
Sick to my stomach, Alec answered. Come on it wasn't that bad, Christine insisted. I don't like showing my body to a stranger like that, Alec replied with honesty. Well, you won't always need the Brazilian. You can just stick to the legs. It's cheaper for you anyway. Alec nodded and asked, how do you handle it? I'm used to it, and my boyfriend loves it. I'll take it, he's getting lucky tonight? Alec inquired. Oh, no. That's one drawback. The rawness isn't really good with sweat. You've got to stay from anything that will make you glow the rest of the day. Well, now, you tell me, Alec retorted, trying to make the best of things. Shut up, Christine replied as she slapped his arm on their way back to her car. On the way back to Alec's apartment, Christine stopped to go shopping with Alec. She selected some ingrown hair serum to treat his sore skin. Alec read the directions and said, This seems like a lot of aftercare. It'll make you feel smoother. It's worth it. And you do not want ingrown hairs. Why? They itch and they're ugly. Just trust me on this. I know what I'm talking about. Alec nodded, certain that she was right. Still, he could not believe that he was buying the items or that he had found himself in a position to need them. His bewilderment over his predicament continued as he went to the cashier and paid for his purchases. With the purchases in hand, Christine took him back to his apartment and said goodbye to him shortly after she pulled in front of it. Alec clumsily clasped his purchases as he moved towards his apartment to let himself in. Alec went inside and tried not to think about what he had let happen to him. It was pointless to dwell on it when he knew he had a task at hand. He went into the bathroom and pulled down his sweatpants and began to apply the serum to his legs. The feelings beneath his hands excited him. He was amazed by how smooth his legs felt. So, this is what I've been missing? Alec said to himself with a half laugh and downcast eyes. Alec returned to work the next day and was forced to roll up his pants to show the girls his smooth legs. The compliments they showered on him turned him red before they got back to working. Any lingering hopes Alec held that the distractions of their lives and workloads would make them forget their plans for him were dashed when Christine and Nadine volunteered to take him shopping that evening. Unable to find the will to say no, Alec went along with them to the store. As they walked through the store, Alec wondered what they were shopping for that evening. Once they walked into the lingerie department, those mental questions ceased. Alec felt like a pervert as Nadine and Christine asked his opinions about the bra and panties that they were looking through for him. With flushed cheeks, Alec prayed that he would die from embarrassment as he gave short responses. Alec noticed women giving him awkward looks. He sensed that his presence in the intimate section of the ladies' department was not appreciated. Those glances and glares only served to make Alec's cheeks burn redder while he continued to give his brief opinions on the intimates that Nadine and Christine were selecting for him. By the time they were walking towards the register, Christine was carrying a basket filled with bras, panties, and hosiery. Alec struggled to believe that it was all for him. He hated the idea, but part of him was allured by it. Once the final item was scanned, Alec was surprised by the total. He was relieved when Nadine and Christine handed him money to offset the full amount based on a collection they had taken with the other girls. Alec struggled to thank them. He wanted it all to be over, but they were insistent that they were right about him. He could not believe it was true. Once the cashier handed Alec back his change, he started towards the door with Nadine and Christine. They followed Alec back to his apartment before they went inside. Alec watched as Christine opened a package of hosiery and said, Here's your lesson of the day. Nadine sat down and listened while Christine continued, Hosiery is super delicate. Nadine nodded in agreement as Christine then noted, but they're manageable to deal with. Alec stared blankly at her before she continued, First, everything starts with well-manicured feet and fingernails. If you have a hangnail, you're going to run your pantyhose, stockings, tights, whatever. Then, why do we wear them? Alec asked. I've asked that question myself, Nadine admitted. It's to look professional, Christine answered both of her co-workers. And sexy, Nadine said with a laugh. That too, Christine replied with a nod. It doesn't seem worth it, Alec responded. 
It's not, but so is a lot of being woman. You'll get used to hating it, Nadine replied. Well, this is a choice for me, Alec protested. Nadine and Christine laughed. They could not believe Alec's delusions about himself. They doubted he truly believed them either. Once they collected themselves, Christine said, All right, enough of that. We have business to attend to. And I want to eat dinner, so let's wrap this up, Nadine added. Christine nodded before she turned to Alec and said, When you start with these, you gently hold the hosiery at the top, like so, and gather one leg up in your fingers until your fingertips reach the tip of the toe. Alec listened to Christine while he watched her collect the pantyhose in her fingertips before she released them and said, You try. Get him out of the pants first, Nadine noted. Oh, right, Christine replied. After the Brazilian, Alec was less self-conscious about stripping down to his underwear. He pulled off his pants and sat in white briefs that did little to conceal the bulge caused by his chastity device. Alec could sense that Nadine was struggling to laugh at his selection of briefs over boxers. Alec took the hosiery from Christine, who had better composed herself. With fumbling fingers he tried to gather the pantyhose together as he had seen Christine do. Once he reached the toes, he turned to Christine to await further direction. Christine pulled a chair towards him and said, Pull it over your toes. Now, you have to make sure that the toe seam is aligned with the front center of your toes and not twisted. If it's twisted, it can tear. Alec nodded as he followed her directions to the letter while he began to pull the pantyhose over the toes of his right foot. The feeling of the fabric coming over his feet was unusual to him. He found the silky softness exotic and exciting. The feeling started to make his member stir. Alec winced while he felt the familiar constraint pushing back against it. Alec bit his lip as he finished pulling the pantyhose over his right foot. Once he moved his hands away, Christine said, Now rest the tip of your foot on the chair. Why? By firmly planting your foot, you'll make sure that the toe seam stays aligned, Christine explained. Okay, Alec replied while he put the part of his foot that was covered by his pantyhose on the chair. Christine watched as Alec situated his foot. She then added, Now, pull it down your foot until you get to your heel, making sure that you stretch all sides evenly. Alec followed Christine's direction prompting her to continue her instruction, Good. Now, you're going to bunch the nylon slightly downward and upward. How is that scientifically possible? Alec countered. What? You're asking me to do two contradictory movements at the same time. They're consecutive movements, Christine corrected Alec with a shake of her head before she added, remember who's the pro here. Alec blushed as he tried to do as she said. While he did so, Nadine interjected, careful, you need to allow for sufficient nylon to fully cover it. Good. Was that the hard part? Alec asked feeling some relief to have the pantyhose over his heel without any noticeable runs. Probably the hardest. Now, all you've got to do is gently pull the pantyhose up your leg. But make sure that you keep your hosiery straight while you do it, Christine answered. Why? Morning twists equal afternoon wrinkles, Nadine interjected with an answer. Alec shook his head at another fact he had to remember while he returned to following Christine's directions. Once Alec got it over his knee, Christine had him repeat the same process with his left foot. Alec felt nervous as he brought the nylon over his toes, down his foot, over his heel and up his leg until he reached the lower thigh of his left leg. Christine gave Alec an approving look before she said, Now, use your palms and only your palms. You can't use your fingernails. You have to use your palms to smooth the fabric gently from your ankles to above your knees. You want to make sure that the stretch is even and the hosiery is straight. But I already got them over my knees, Alec noted. That's never the end of it, Christine countered. Is there ever really an end to anything we do? Nadine asked Christine with a shake of her head. Christine smiled and shook her head before she turned back to Alec and criticized his dawdling. Alec followed her directions again while he smoothed out his hose. Christine then added, Now, that you're straight and smooth, you've got to keep pulling the hose up to the top your legs. Just smooth it out as you go with your palms. 
Alec complied with her orders and felt a painful compressing on his manhood that was swelling from the soft feeling of the fabric that was enveloping his legs. Christine ignored his grimacing as she said, Yeah, just like that. Once Alec reached the top of his legs, Christine said, Last step, but a big one. Pull the top over waist a few inches at time, but make sure you don't pull from only the waistband. If you do, it will cause wrinkles and will put stress on the fabric. So? You'll buying another pair real soon if you stress them out, Nadine interjected with another answer. Alec nodded again before he worked the pantyhose top up to his waist. As the waistband was released in place, Alec asked, Can I put on my pants now? Ugh, pants on those legs, Nadine half-joked with an envious stare. It would be a shame, but he can't go up to Joel in a skirt and tell him the truth, Christine replied with a laugh at the thought. What are you talking about? Alec inquired. You're going to have to tell Joel the truth sometime, Nadine responded. Sometime meaning tomorrow, Christine added. What? Alec shrieked. I've brought you the perfect outfit to wear, Christine continued. But, Alec replied with a tremble, fearing what Joel would say when he told him that he was a woman trapped in a man's body. Don't worry it includes that pair of pants you were going on about, Christine teased. Alec was aghast as Christine produced a pair of black, stretch-knit pants from her oversized purse. She smiled while she said, You will have to press these, dear. Understatement of the century, Nadine remarked as she looked at the wrinkles from the folding. Alec gave the girls a nervous look before Christine removed a button-up cream-colored blouse from her bag. She handed it to Alec and told him to pair it with the pants. I can't wear this, Alec complained. Alexandra, as of tomorrow, you're a girl. Stop thinking too much about this, Christine replied. It's not like magic, Alec protested, ignoring the name that Christine had called him. No. You're going to have to work very hard at it, Christine acknowledged. I don't think I can do this, Alec responded with a despondent look and a racing heart, unsure if he could survive being forced to come out as a transgender woman to his boss. We'll be there for you, Christine replied, trying to console him as she stroked his back. You're forcing it on me, Alec charged. How else would you bring yourself to do it? Nadine asked. I wouldn't, Alec said with a shake of his head. So, we're doing what you won't let yourself do because of fear or whatever. It's because I don't want to. We all saw you in heels, dear. We know that this is what you want and who you are. That was because of you too, Alec countered, trying to make everyone in the room finally believe his words. Christine and Nadine shook their heads before Nadine asked, do you think any other guy in our office would trade shoes with one of us? Well, my feet are small and the other guys. Have man feet, Christine retorted. My feet are manly, Jim countered as he looked down at his size 8 feet. Nadine and Christine grinned at one another as their eyes veered down at his nylon-covered feet before returning to gaze at one another. Those feet were made for heels, Christine responded. No. I'm... I've got a whole bunch for you, Nadine replied, cutting Alec off before she headed out of his apartment. Where is she going? Alec asked. Her car, I guess, Christine answered with a shrug. It was not long before Nadine returned with a bag. She put the bag down in front of Alec and said, These are for you. Alec cringed while he opened the bag and looked at the female footwear that he had been presented with. He forced himself to thank the girl before Christine said, We should probably take her old shoes to Goodwill. No, Alec whined. Alexandra, you don't need them anymore. You don't have to keep pretending, Nadine seconded. I'm not, Alec futilely tried to defend his the shattered remnants of his dwindling masculinity, but he could not find any legitimate reasons to support his statement. Christine and Nadine ignored him as they started into his bedroom and collected his shoes. Alec protested weakly before they bagged up his shoes. Can't you leave me one pair? What am I going to wear tomorrow? I thought about that, Nadine answered before she pulled a pair of black, leather loafers from her bag. Alec looked over the shoes and realized that while they were feminine, they were not unambiguously a woman's shoe at first glance. Under a more inspecting review, they were clearly made for a woman. 
They would survive a quick look, however, and he was sure that no one paid much attention to a man's shoes. See, I told you these were perfect, Nadine said in the face of Alex's silence. Shortly thereafter, Christine and Nadine saw themselves out of Alex's apartment. Alec was left with his thoughts. He wondered how he could live as a woman. He knew that once he told his boss that he was a transsexual, he could not just take back the words. Saying that he wanted to be a woman was not something that he could easily walk back from. There was air of permanency to it in his mind. Alec struggled to fall asleep that night. He kept thinking about what the staff would think of him once he was forced to come out as a woman. He feared for his safety and was sure he would suffer abuse. Is this really what I want? Alec asked himself repeatedly as he stared at the stained, cracked, white ceiling above his bed. As the next morning came, Alec felt that his stomach was in knots. Struggling to keep his food down, Alec finished eating half his meal before he went to get dressed in the outfit that Christine and Nadine had left for him. It was not overly feminine. A passing eye would not think twice about a man sporting it. Under any scrutiny, however, it would be obvious that everything he was wearing was made for a woman's body. Alec pulled on his soft black pants over his panties. He was half surprised by the lack of pockets and decided to carry his keys and wallet in his coat instead. He put on the collared, button-up blouse next. He struggled with the inverted position of the buttons of the top as he fastened each before he bent down to put on his loafers. He slipped his bare feet into the shoes and felt the floor gliding below him with each step. Christ, an evening moving like a fairy, Alec complained to himself. What did I do to deserve this? Alec thought while he headed out of his home. You have no backbone, he answered his self-pity. Alec put his head down and fought back tears on the way to his car, knowing that it was too true. He had been the master of his situation, however, mundane it may have been. The moment he surrendered control of his manhood, he had cast the die that had led to this moment. He did not have to do it. He did not have to give in so easily to Christine and the girls. He could have fought it. He could have stopped it, but he did not. He was not sure that he even wanted to stop it, but he was sure that he did not want this. Having to come out as transgendered was the most mortifying thing he could think of doing, but he alone had put himself in this situation. Resigned to that fact, Alec got behind the wheel and started towards the office. Thoughts about veering his car into oncoming traffic crossed his mind. While they lingered, he dismissed them, feeling that it would too cowardly and too messy. It would also draw an innocent person into his own descent. He could not take someone with him or burden some helpful person with the image of his mangled corpse. He doubted that he could even harm himself. Those thoughts left Alec's head as he pulled up at his office. Alec swallowed hard as he looked at the building. He knew what words would soon be coming through his lips. He felt that there was no way out without humiliating himself further by admitting what he had agreed to with Christine. He put his head down as he got out of his car. He hurried into the building and started towards his office door. The shoes sounded different on the floor than his normal Oxfords. The sound was softer. Alec knew that whatever meager menace he had as a man was gone. Alec walked into the office in disbelief that he was being forced to admit to his boss that he was transsexual. Despite the girl's assurances that there were protections for transgender people in the state, as well as the company's progressive policies on the issue, he was not sure how his boss would react. Once his boss entered the office, Alec looked at the girls. Brianna nodded to him. He understood that he had to go and confront his boss. Not wanting to waste any time and linger on his tormenting thoughts a second longer, Alec got to his feet and knocked on his boss's door. Joel's eyes rose to meet Alex as he asked what he could do for him. Alex struggled to ask, Joel, can we talk for a moment? Sure, Joel replied while he took off his glasses. Alec closed the door behind him while he approached Joel. Joel squinted as he asked, What's going on? I have to tell you something. Okay, Joel answered Alex's pause. I'm transgendered. Joel flinched before he pushed his back against the back of his chair. He crossed his arms before he asked, Are you sure? Alec was taken aback by the question. He wondered who would say such a life-changing thing without being sure. 
He nodded before he forced himself to reply again, yes. Alec could tell that Joel was fighting off the urge to give him a look of disgust. He knew that he would likely have done it if the situation had been reversed. Joel nodded his head before he said, okay. I guess I can see it. What? Alec inquired. I've seen how you are with the girls. You've always been one of them. Alec blushed at the man's assessment of him before Joel continued, I wish you the best. I hope you stay on. Alec sensed that Joel was towing the company line on transgender issues. Joel knew the policies better than he did. Alec swallowed hard before he said, thank you. Joel nodded before he looked down at Alec's clothing. He could tell that he was wearing women's shoes. The pants had no pockets. The top was likely a blouse as well. Joel broke the silence as he said, Do the girls know, Alec? Wait, is that what you want to be called? Um, no, Alec lied before he continued, I prefer Alexandra. Joel was silent as he processed Alec's request. Alec then said, The girls know. Good. How did they take it? Well. Alec saw the relieved look on Joel's face. He breathed a sigh of relief before he said, That's great. Have you told anyone else? No. I wanted to tell you first. Do you want me to send an announcement? I don't think that's necessary, Alec hurried to reply. Well, you have to tell the rest of the staff. I will, but the mothership will find out when I change my personnel file, Alec replied. Joel nodded before Alec excused himself to let his boss get back to work. Alec felt sick to his stomach that Joel had accepted his statement as truth without even at least questioning him. Was I that transparent? Maybe it is what I am, Alec fretted as the girls gave him expectant looks. Alec answered their silent demands for information by disclosing how the conversation went. The girls all hugged him as they welcomed him as one of the girls in the office. Alec blushed at the statements before he managed to joke, wasn't I one of them already? The girl's laughter at his words gave Alex a momentary morale boost. His spirits quickly dropped as he realized what he had to do next. It took a few minutes before Alec worked up the courage to tell the rest of his co-workers. As most of his co-worker responded with little to no surprise to his announcement, Alec became more convinced that the girls had him pegged correctly. It all seemed like confirmation of a central truth that he had hidden. Alec S. struggled not to become too emotional as more and more of his co-workers told him how they always figured that he was a girl at heart. Their responses were shocking. He expected disgust, but received little more than he normally did from some of his co-workers. They had apparently long ago concluded that his coming out was only a matter of time. He had always had awkward relationships with these people, and he knew that it would likely continue. Most, however, were polite about it. They appeared to be struggling to ensure that he was not upset by what they said to him. He guessed that they feared punishment if they said anything offensive about him. Still, they all acted unsurprised by the announcement and more surprised by his timing. How could they all know? Alec wondered as he belatedly got to work beside the girls. Once the workday ended, Brianna and Christine made arrangements to meet Alec the next day so they could take him out for a Saturday trip to the salon that Brianna's sister worked at. While Alec was not sure that he was ready for that step, telling his boss and co-workers that he would be returning to work as a woman on Monday was not something they would forget. While he felt forced to make that declaration, he knew that the only way around going along with it was by quitting. He, however, was all too sure that he could not bring himself to doing that. With the plans made, Alec went home to his small apartment. He felt small and weak as he made himself a light dinner, not feeling as if he had much of an appetite. Why am I such a coward? Alec wondered aloud as he rested on the couch with tears coming to his eyes. He retired to his bee early, hopeful that a good night's sleep might make him feel better. When he awoke, he felt well rested. Those feelings dissipated as he began to worry about what was awaiting him that afternoon. After the trip to the salon, Alec was certain that there would be no going back for the near future. He was going to be a girl at work and at home. Part of him wondered what it would be like. 
Given his size and lack of male accomplishments, he had often felt he would make a better girl than a guy, but it was not something he had ever gave serious thought to trying until his co-workers had started pushing him to make the transition. The sound of a knock on his door made Alex's stomach sink. He knew who was beyond the door as he drew it open dressed in the unisex clothing he had put on that morning over his padded bra and matching white panties. Once the door was open, Christine and Brianna stepped inside and kissed Alec on his cheek as they said hello. Brianna struggled to hide her distaste for his apartment before she told him he needed to wear something more feminine. Why? Alec inquired. I told the stylist that you're a girl. She's going to see right through me. She won't say anything about it. You'll be so comfortable with her. How do you know that? Alec asked, uneasy with the idea of going out in public as a girl. It's her nature, Brianna answered before she went into his bedroom. Christine and Brianna looked through his new wardrobe before they selected an outfit they felt would be good for the salon. Alec gave the outfit a resigned look. He knew it did not matter what he wore to the salon. The situation had gotten too out of hand for any concerns about presenting himself as a woman to make sense. With the girls out of the room, Alec disrobed before he stepped into the black miniskirt that was decorated with an all-over, pale floral print. He pulled the elastic waistband up before he straightened out the flouncy, ruffled hem that rested midway down his thighs. The fact that the soft skirt felt comfortable on him was not lost Alec. He wondered what it meant about him as he reached for his black, t-shirt. Alec brought the cotton blend jersey top over his head and let the torqued hemline come to a rest over his skirt. The lightweight top felt good on him as well. Alec sighed, accepting the truth that he was far more comfortable in the skirt and top than a man should ever be. He then bent down to put on the silver, thong sandals the girls selected. He slipped his feet into the sandals that were decorated with glittering crystals on the medallions resting over where the thong met the straps running down the side of his feet before he headed to the bedroom door. As he emerged, Brianna shook her head as she said, I wish I had legs like those. They go for miles, Christine seconded. Alec blushed as he thanked them before Brianna said, You're going to be batting guys away with a stick soon enough. Alec was unsure how to respond. His silence went unchallenged before Brianna helped whisk him out the door. Alec was surprised by the heavy girl's strength as he leaned on her arm. They went down to Christine's car before she drove them to the salon. The girls made small talk on the drive. They tried to include Alec, but he found it difficult to keep up with the topics he knew little about until they reached the salon's parking lot. He was happy enough for their conversation since it distracted him from his worrisome thoughts about his situation. Stepping out of the car, Alec walked towards the salon. As they approached the door, Alec struggled to hide his nervousness. He shot Christine and Brianna a pleading look, hoping that they would reconsider what they were pushing him to go through with since he was still unsure if he wanted it. Don't be so nervous. All you have to do is show up and let yourself be pampered. It's one of the best things about being a girl, Brianna counseled in response to his glance. Alec tried to give the girl a smile. He knew that she meant well, but he was unable to believe that no one would be unable to tell what he was once they started to work on him. Alec walked into the salon and struggled not to blush as the girls in the salon all said hello to Brianna. Brianna introduced him and Christine as friends from work before she told them, Alexandra is a new girl in the neighborhood. Understatement of the century, Alec thought in response. The girls welcomed him warmly before he was taken to get his hair washed. Alec felt strangely good as the shampoo girl ran her delicate fingers through his hair and massaged his scalp. The sensations brought warm and tingly feelings throughout his body. A girl could get used to this, Alec thought with a smile before he was sat up. While his hair was patted dry, the smile left his face as he realized what he had thought. He did not have time to ponder the hidden meaning of the thought as he was sent to a stylist's station. The stylist greeted Alec with a kind word as Brianna and Christine came over to them. The stylist exchanged kisses on the cheek with Brianna. The stylist then asked Alec how he wanted his hair styled. Alec hemmed for a moment before he said, Brianna said she had some ideas. Brianna knows her hair, the stylist noted. The stylist gave Alec a few more positive words before Brianna told her what she was thinking. 
With a clap of the hands, Reese said, I love it. Is she crazy? Alec wondered about the husky voiced stylist's enthusiasm. Reese explained to Alec what was going to be done to his hair as his hair was lifted to the side. As his hair was trimmed, Reese gave Alec tips about how to style it going forward. Alec tried to remember each of the pieces of advice, given what was in his foreseeable future. As he watched his hair take on a new shape, he was surprised by how good it looked. He felt that he almost looked like a girl. While not overly attractive, he felt that he was not ugly. He was slightly turned on by the girl in the mirror that looked far more professional than he did with a ponytail. With his hair finished, the girls brought him to get his nails done at the neighboring nail salon. Given what he had acquiesced to already, Alex saw little reason to protest as he walked towards the salon. Alex's eyes widened as he walked into the nail salon. His eyes were drawn to the wall containing a wide variety of nail polish shades. The receptionist greeted Brianna warmly before she told them that they were there for Alec. Oh, very nice to meet you, miss, the girl said in a sweet tone. Alec reciprocated in kind, hating the pretty girl referring to him as miss. He wanted to protest it, but was too scared of the consequences to do so. The receptionist brought him to a station quickly before he exchanged introductions with a manicurist. With their greetings over, the manicurist asked through a heavy Korean accent, What color would you like? Um, I'm not sure, Alec admitted. I can give you recommendation, the girl said with a voice that Alec felt was sweet to his ears. Okay. For your skin color, I would go with blush pink. It's nice and light, just like you. Alec nodded before he lied, that sounds nice. Are we doing your toenails too? Alec's eyes darted to Brianna and Christine's nodding heads. Alec responded with a smile as he told her he would be having a pedicure as well. The manicurist nodded before she put the fingertips of his right hand into a bowl of water to soften his skin. The girl inspected his hands and said, Your nails are so short. We can't do much in way of shaping. What would you recommend? Grow you nails out a little and I can give them a nice round shape, but I'll do best I can with this. Okay, Alec replied before the manicurist began to clean the underside of the nails of Alec's right hand. She then pushed back his cuticles by trimming the excess skin around the nails. Alec grimaced as he felt the woman cut too deep. His eyes darted towards the blood on his index finger before the manicurist applied a green liquid to his cut. What is that? Alec asked. The woman gave him a curious glance as Alec had not disguised his ordinary tone. She squinted before she answered, it helps with the bleeding. Okay, Alec replied, dropping back into his practiced higher pitch as he saw the bleeding come to a sudden stop. The manicurist then went back to preparing his nails before she repeated the process on his left hand. Once the manicurist finished with the nail preparation, she proceeded to give him a hand and arm massage. Alec enjoyed the feeling of his hand being manipulated about by the girl's small, soft hand. Alec blushed as his member's swelling was soon aborted. Alec felt humiliated by how good it felt. He struggled to avoid looking at the manicurist, certain that he could not look her in the eye at that moment. When her hands left his to add blush pink to his nails, Alec felt slightly downtrodden. He watched as the pale color was painted onto his nails. He feared that he had made a bad choice as the color settled onto his nails. That's not what I thought that would like, Alec thought before the girl added another coat to his nails. Alec felt more relieved by the choice he had made to go along with the woman's recommendation as the color settled onto his nails. That looks so cute, Alec thought while he smiled at his nails. Wait! What? Alec's mind soon fretted. He could not believe that he was happy with the painting of his nails. He realized that he should hate it, but somehow it seemed not that bad. He shook his head at that realization before he was sent to have his nails dried at UV light station. Alec gave the UV light a pensive look as he thought, how sanitary can this be? Reading his pensive look, Brianna said, Good ahead, honey. It's fine. It must be nice to have cheerleaders, the manicurist remarked with a smile. Alec blushed before the girl hurried to add, I was just kidding. Alec nodded with a forced smile before he moved his nails under the lights. He felt the heat on his nails and waited for his nails to dry. 
Alec talked with Brianna and Christine before he overheard the woman next to him talking on her cell phone. Alec's eyes darted towards Brianna and Christine as they listened to the girl complaining about her boyfriend without any regard for who could overhear her. Is she kidding me? Alec mouthed to Brianna and Christine's laughter. Brianna leaned in and said, it comes with the territory, but she's pretty obnoxious. As the manicurist went to attend to the woman, the entitled patron started complaining about the scent of the lotion used on her skin. Alec bent down and smelt his own hands. He did not sense that it was overpowering. If anything, it was a light scent to his mind. Alec hoped that she would get over it quickly. Instead, she doubled down on her attitude. Alec sunk in his hair while he listened to the woman talk down to the staff. Alec gave Christine and Brianna another glance. Total bitch, Christine mouthed back to Alec and Brianna's nodding heads. Alec was relieved when she paid and left. Alec felt a palpable sense of relief that the anxiety that was filling the salon had passed. After a few deep breaths, Alec remembered his own predicament. He was not simply another of the girls put off by a spoiled woman. He was a man in a floral print, miniskirt getting a money petty. He was almost sure of it. Alec did not have long to dawdle on those thoughts. The manicurist came by and moved his fingers from underneath the lights and said, So pretty. Show me, Brianna said with a grin. Alec flashed his nails at the girls with his limp wrist. Alec caught his actions and thought, Fuck, why did I do it that way? Once the girls finished talking about his fingernails, Alec was turned over to another worker to do his pedicure. Alec felt uncomfortable while the woman began to remove rough skin by filing his heels. I can't believe this girl has to touch my feet. Christ, I hope they don't smell, Alec fretted while he watched the woman work, afraid that that he would see her wince. As the woman began to paint his toenails, her fingers touched the bottom of his feet. Alec felt slightly tickled by the feeling and struggled not to kick his feet in response to the sensation before his toenails were put beneath a UV light. Once his toes were dried, Alec paid for the salon services and left with Christine and Brianna. As they reached his apartment, Christine opened her trunk and said, We've got gifts for you. What? Alec asked, though he had little doubt it was designed to help him better look the new part they had cast for him in life. Alec's hands pulled away from his styled and shaped tresses as his eyes tore away from his painted toenails and hairless legs. His eyes lifted towards the closet that had been partly filled with hand-me-downs from Christine and gifts from the other girls in the office to help facilitate his transition. He hated to think of the word. He knew that was what he was doing. He was unsure, however, if it was what he wanted. The only thing he was sure about was that the girls he worked with were certain that he was born to be a girl. Alec's eyes dropped and caught the pale, pink-painted fingernails the manicurist had given him. A smile came to his face while he thought about how pretty they looked before he shook his head. You're not supposed to be pretty, Alec reminded himself before he threw his back against the bed and stared at the ceiling. What's being ugly done for you? A voice in his head retorted. Is this all I can be? Alec wondered. The girls who spent more time with him than anyone appeared certain that he was better suited for womanhood than manhood. That alone made Alec sense that he was a failure as a man. Alec changed out of his skirt and into a pair of the leggings that Christine had left for him. The soft, clingy feelings of the leggings felt like a second skin on his legs. Alec enjoyed the feeling before realizing that he should hate it. Despite that thought, there was no doubt his body was giving the contrary response. This can't be me, Alec bemoaned as he looked down at his thin legs that seemed alluring to him in the clingy spandex. The only thing that turned his stomach though was the sight of his cage-enhanced manhood. Alec ran his hands through this hair and thought aloud, how can this be me? After pausing, Alec asked, is this what I want? Silence greeted his self-question again. Alec walked into the bathroom and gazed at his reflection. The despairing girl staring back at him felt more real than the reflection that had greeted him for years. He struggled to keep from crying as he looked at the girl that his co-workers had pushed him to become. I'm beautiful, Alec said through tears, feeling oddly better about his appearance than he could ever recall. He brushed the tears away and immediately regretted smudging his makeup. 
The regret only made him more confused about his reaction to his reflection. A moment of clarity came into his mind as Alec nodded at the girl in the mirror while he composed himself. This is me, he said a few times to self-affirm before he went to turn on the television. With that affirmation in mind, Alec spent the rest of the weekend in Christine's hand-me-downs. He spent the time in solitude as a woman while he tried to live in peace before Monday came and he would be forced to return to work. Once Monday came, Alec got ready for work in clothing that Christine had gifted him. The work clothing was nearly all familiar to him. He had seen her in most of the outfits before. Some he had never seen before and assumed were possibly from her friends. The knowledge that everyone knew what was coming at work made his return less concerning to him. The fears he had when he spoke to every employee in his office were largely gone. He felt that he knew what he was in for when it came to each coworker and boss in the office. He sensed that he was well aware of what to expect. Despite that, he was still concerned how the reality of the situation would go over with his coworkers. They had all seen him in girls' clothing, but that outfit was little different from men's clothing. Now, he was going to be work with false breasts and in unambiguously feminine clothing and shoes. He was going to be presenting himself as a woman from head to toe. After styling his hair and doing his makeup, Alec went into his bedroom to get dressed. As Alec disrobed, his eyes fixated on the outfit he would sporting for his first day in the office as Alexandra. He wanted everything to be perfect. While he and the girls had time to deal with his transition, he knew that no one else in the office had been afforded a similar meaningful opportunity. Alec put on his panties first and soon followed it with a matching bra. The image that struck him in the mirror in his bedroom was disheartening to Alec. The figure appeared to be nothing more than a scared, petite boy in a matching bra and panty set. He was no more intimidating than a three-year-old girl and, yet, simultaneously, little more feminine than he was in the nude. Alec clenched his eyes while he turned away from the mirror. He reached for his breast forms before he stuffed each of his cups. His hands cupped his false breasts as he felt the familiar stirring between his legs that occurred before the chastity device started to squash his excitement. The discomfort between Alec's legs made him shake his head before he reached for his hosiery. Alec rolled the tights down as he was trained before he brought them up his legs. The feelings made his stomach tingle, even as the continued compression of his manhood brought discomfort. When the fuck will she let me out of this, Alec muttered while he stared up the ceiling. After a few deep breaths, he pulled the tights over his chastity belt until the top rest on his hips. With his tights on, Alec reached for his dress next. Alec pulled the princess-seamed, wool crepe dress up his body. He pushed his hands through the three-quartered sleeves of the scarlet-colored dress that would draw attention to him, even if he had been born a woman. His hands adjusted the flounced hemline before they reached behind his back to fasten the hidden rear zipper. As his hands moved towards his hips, he looked at the mirror. Alec hurried towards the mirror with quick, short steps and gazed at his reflection. He smiled at the way his body looked before he noticed that his bust was askew. Manly problems, Alec joked to himself while he adjusted the round neckline of his dress and straightened out his false bust and bra. His hands then moved to the matching belt that self-adjusted to cinch the dress to his waist. As his proportions sat the way they should on his lithe frame, the figure in the mirror appeared to Alec to be much more like a woman than a man. Alec struggled not to cry as he clasped his hands and took in his appearance from the neck down. This is me, Alec said before his eyes locked on the pair of shoes he was pairing with his outfit. Alec clasped the shoes before he stepped into the pair of nude, rounded toe pumps. Alec stepped into each shoe before adjusting the single, asymmetric stretch straps that crossed over both of his feet. As he stood up and started to walk, Alec felt that he was moving around with greater ease in his heels than he could recall. With a bounce in his step, Alec walked out of his bedroom to apply his makeup. With each cosmetic he added to face, Alec felt that Alexandra was becoming more real before his eyes. By the time he applied his perfume, Alec felt that the male side of his life was buried. He could only hope that it would stay that way. Alec then walked back into his bedroom to put on his jewelry. He slipped a few golden-plated rings onto his fingers before he put on a gold chain necklace and a pair of faux diamond earrings. With outfit attended to, Alec grabbed his keys and pocketbook as he headed out the door.
He strolled out of the building to make his way to his small car. Alec got inside and shifted his feet. He swapped his heels for a pair of flats as Christine had suggested when they last spoke. After slipping the shoe onto his right foot, Alec started the car. Alec felt anxious while he drove to work. He feared that the reality would not match the expectations that his co-workers had about his transition. He wondered if he looked unconvincing to others or, perhaps, too convincing. Maybe they expected him to look like a linebacker in a dress, but he did not have the body for that to happen. Just maintain the smile, Alec told himself, hoping he could turn back any ill will with niceness and a new sense of womanly confidence. Alec pulled into the parking lot of his office building and stared at its glass-fronted facade. Alec froze as he looked at the building. He knew that he was in store for some abuse. It was unavoidable, but it was not going to be too bad. The company could nearly guarantee that when he was in the safety of the office suite. He nodded to himself as he said, I can do this. Alec uttered those words to try to convince himself, but deep inside he already knew it was true. He had a buffer in the girls and an ally in his employer. It's their problem not mine, Alec said while he thought about those that were unhappy about his transition. Alec's slender fingers tapped on his steering wheel for a moment before he reached for his purse and opened the car door. Alec swung his legs out the door together. It was not something any of the girls had told him to do. The dress on his body made it seem like an instinctual movement for him. Alec stood up and closed the door behind him. He felt the breeze blowing under the skirt of his dress and felt lighter on his feet, even as the pitch of his heels was still unusual to him. Walking through the parking lot, Alec saw workers from other businesses in the building filing inside. He saw a few heads turn his way. None of their eyes lingered on him for long as he was careful to maintain a good distance from them. So far so good, Alec said with a chuckle under his breath as he glanced at his reflection on the building's reflective walls. Alec drew the door to the building open after putting his keycard through the card reader. There was no one in the hallway, which was not unusual. The public entrance was on the other side of the building and the elevators he was heading for only served the employees of the west side of the facility. As he came around the corner to the elevators, he saw two women standing next to each other. They were making light conversation when Alec came to a stop a few feet from them to wait for the elevator. They each gave Alec a quick glance. Alec stole looks at them and noticed that neither had felt the need to give him a second look. The lack of interest in his presence made Alec's heart flutter. He felt more confident than ever as he joined the ladies on the elevator and pressed the button for his floor, flashing his pink-painted nails in the process. Alec ignored the conversation that the women were having about their personal lives before he exited on his floor. Alec moved towards his office, hearing the sound of his low heels slapping on the tiles of the hallway that were announcing his presence as he moved. He wanted to strut to make the sound louder and draw more attention, but he knew that it was not right moment. Alec pulled open the employee-only door to his office after punching in his personal code. Alec walked through the back of the office and saw no one until he came around the corner to where he and most of the rest of the administrative staff sat. As Alec moved around, he heard none of their familiar voices chatting, but he heard typing. Alec smiled as he looked over the half wall and saw Morgan. Morgan's eyes widened while she brought her hands over mouth. Oh, my God. Look at you. You look beautiful, Morgan exclaimed as she got to her feet and hugged Alec. Thanks, I try, Alec said with a shy smile, a little embarrassed by Morgan's effusive and sincere-sounding praise. Morgan took in his appearance while Brianna straggled into the office, followed in short order by Nadine and Aaron. The girls were all surprised by Alec's seeming ease in his dress. Nice dress, Christine said with a smile while she took in Alec's feminized appearance. I'd like to say that this was my fashion choice, Alec joked. You have to give us a twirl. Brianna insisted. A twirl? Alec asked with a laugh. I like a little flourish, Brianna replied. Alec shook his head before he gave the girls a twirl and felt his dress billowing up as the girls stood up to inspect him from every angle. The girls gave him more praise before Alec noticed that Aaron was wearing a new dress. I love that dress. Thanks, Aaron replied. That heart-shaped neckline is so cute. The specificity of the compliment took the girls aback for a moment. 
After exchanging a few more compliments with the girls, Alex started to work. He sat at his desk, crossed his nylon-covered legs at his ankles and tried to focus on his responsibilities. Alec felt eyes upon him as he worked. He noticed the stolen glances from other employees that quickly darted away from him when he clearly caught them. He sensed that they did not want to engage him, but were curious about how he looked. Am I a zoo animal to these people? Alec wondered. Alec also overhead a few comments that he looked surprisingly good. The comments made him smile, even as most his co-workers and bosses refused to say such things to his face. In Alec's mind, the more obviously disgusted were making sure to keep any of their comments to themselves or, at the least, out of his earshot. It was something that Alec was uncomfortable with, but he figured he could tolerate it. As Alec typed on his machine, Alec listened to the conversation that Christine and Aaron were having about their boyfriends. Brianna and Nadine talked about their ex-boyfriends and ex-husbands, while Alec stayed silent. Why are you silent? Morgan asked Alec. I don't have a boyfriend to complain about, Alec answered with a smile. Well, neither do I, she countered. You have a husband, Alec retorted. Whom I love, dearly, Morgan added. Jeesh, you're making me sick, Brianna replied. Love is not a terrible thing, Aaron noted, always finding Morgan and her husband's obvious affection for each other endearing and something she wished to have. Not for some of us, Brianna countered. So, when are you going to get a boyfriend? Aaron asked Alec, hoping to move the conversation in a less dark place than Brianna's bitterness about relationships would allow for. I really haven't thought about it yet, Alec admitted. Seriously? Morgan asked. Hey, I'm new at this, Alec said as with a smile while he pointed at his faux breasts with both of his small hands. You don't think you're ready? Morgan inquired. I need to get my bearings being me before I can be part of we, Alec explained as he shifted his feet in his low heels. You got to help yourself before you can help somebody else. Christine seconded, understanding Alec's position. The conversation continued for a while as Alec continued his data input work that comprised much of his workdays. Alec paused only to get a cup of coffee. Alec got to his feet and swung his hips as he walked through the office to the kitchenette. As he walked, he saw the staff in the kitchenette running away while he approached. I don't have leprosy, Alec thought with a shake of his head as his ever-present smile departed from his face. Alec knew that not everyone would be comfortable with him, but that did not mean they had to scatter when he approached as if his transsexuality was contagious. Alec made himself a cup of coffee in quiet solitude before he returned to his desk and went back to working. Alec was nervous when he had to make his first trip to the restroom. He feared the reaction of his female co-workers when he entered it. He had little choice though, since Nadine had made clear that he was to only use the female bathroom given the change to his gender identity in the company's records. Alec put his head down as he walked into the women's room. He worried about how the other women would feel if they saw him in there. He knew that some would undoubtedly feel violated by his presence, while others would just be uncomfortable. Although his first few trips went without an issue, with some of the girls being nice to him, one woman gave him a disgusted look as she saw him exiting the bathroom stall. Alec's stomach fell as he saw the anger in her eyes as she dried her hands. She stormed out of the room while Alec went to the sink and washed his hands. His heart raced as the look on the co-worker's face weighed on his mind. He clenched his eyes as he felt the angst in the pit of his stomach. He hated how he made the woman feel, but he also felt that it was her problem and not his. He walked back into the office and heard the woman yelling at the human resources representative. Alec's eyes went downcast as he tried to ignore her complaints. His spirits rose as the human resources representative explained the situation calmly to the irate woman. The laws of the state said that Alec had every legal right to be in that bathroom. That did little to calm the woman who yelled about the state of the nation. Alec laughed as the man noted, you could always move to North Carolina. Soon thereafter, Alec finished his first day at the office. He went home that evening hoping that that next day would be an improvement. Outside of the girls, his first week at work was an awkward affair for Alec. The second day brought more employees walking past his desk and sneaking peeks at him. 
Alex struggled not to gaze at them as they did so. He wondered if they thought that they were moving past him undetected. He felt like he was on display as he was gawked at without being engaged. Alex sensed that everyone needed time to process his new look. He realized that it had to be an awkward situation for them as well. To his relief, by late in the week, almost everyone was accepting and open with Alec as the novelty of his feminine appearance wore off. To most, he rescinded back into the background from which he had came. He was surprised by it, but there were older employees that gave him dirty looks to convey their disgust. Alec did his best to ignore them, but he could not help but let it grate on him to some degree. Several of his male co-workers ignored him. Alec had never been particularly close with them. He had never been one of the guys. He had always been an outsider, so he was not upset about becoming invisible to them. Alec felt that their disgusted silence was preferable to an express insult. It certainly made it easier for him to ignore them. Alternatively, many of his female co-workers made it a point to support Alec. Alec had longer and more frequent interactions with these women than he had ever had before. Alec could sense that they were trying to make him feel safe around them, but he wondered if they were doing it, at least in part, to dig at the men that were both shunning him and dismissing their talents. Those that engaged him were largely cordial and made a few name slip-ups every once in a while. He did not let that bother him though. He was too happy that they were treating him like a human to let something like a gender pronoun get to him. That management was supportive of him was not something that was lost on Alec either. He was grateful for it, since he knew that if the laws of his state were not on his side, management may have gotten rid of him as a distraction. The office manager, office boss and human resources representative reached out to him regularly to ask how he was doing and how they could make his transition easier. Alec was thankful for the outreach and recommended that the company provide sensitivity training, despite knowing how poorly it would go over with some of the more curmudgeonly employees. To the contrary, sticking it to them was something that brought a broad smile to his face. The company arranged for a professional sensitivity trainer they had on retainer to make a presentation a few weeks after he started to work as Alexandra. The announcement produced audible whining and groans in the office, but it made it clear to some of Alex's more intransigent adversaries how much the company was on his side. Soon thereafter, Alec noticed the begrudging tolerance of his existence that was coming from some of those that had not hidden their dislike for his transition before. The more disgusted, however, were undeterred and did little to hide their continued revulsion of him, while they simultaneously acted as if he was a non-entity. Despite the in-week improvements, the end of the workweek was a welcome relief for Alec. He looked forward to getting some time away from the conflicted and disgusted co-workers. That Christine and Aaron had volunteered for a little girl time with him on the weekend made him feel somewhat at ease. When the weekend came, Aaron and Christine picked Alec up in Christine's car. Alec waved at them as he got in the back seat and smoothed out his black and pink, floral-printed pleated skirt in the process. This is your first trip as Alexandra, right? Christine inquired as she pulled away from the sidewalk. Well, we went shopping before, Alec reminded Christine. That was when you were still a guy, Christine countered. If you say so, Alec joked. No. I'm being serious. So am I. I was still shopping for me, Alec rejoined. But not as you. No, Alec admitted as he kept his knees together. When did you get that bag? Alec then asked after he saw the pocketbook on Aaron's lap. I got this a few weeks ago, she answered and she was hiding it on us," Christine added with eyes darting from side to side. I just didn't think it goes well with my professional outfits. It's so pretty though. Yeah, but I'm trying to look professional. I don't want the bosses thinking I'm some young airhead. You're too self-conscious for your age, Alec retorted. I'm trying to move up in this company someday, Aaron replied. You and me both, Alec responded with a smile. I didn't think you ever wanted to be promoted, Christine noted. I didn't work my way through college to work as an administrative assistant my whole life, Alec replied. Christine and Aaron smiled at each other. They had never heard such a forceful response from Alec before, nor any hint of ambition. They continued to make small talk before they pulled up in front of the mall. 
Alec looked around at the smattering of people in the parking lot and paid them little attention. He felt safe with Christine and Aaron as his buffer. He walked alongside them while they entered the building. As comfortable as Alec felt walking around with Christine and Aaron, he was still waiting for someone to recognize him from his former life as a man. The prospect was beyond mortifying for Alec. He hated that such a moment could occur. It was something that women that were raised as girls did not have to deal with and he envied them for that. Not for the first time, Alec was relieved that he largely kept a low profile as a man. Alec smiled to himself as he realized that all his prior efforts to hide himself, which had held him back before, were finally paying fruit. Win one for cowardice, Alec thought with a shake of his head and a smile before they entered a store. Alec walked through the store and saw no one give them a second look other than few lusty glances given towards Aaron by some of the younger men in the establishment. Alec enjoyed the anonymity he felt before they came to a stop in the professional clothing section of the ladies' department. Alec glanced around the ladies' department and saw that no one was giving him a dirty look anymore. He nodded to himself as he thought, I look good. Christine caught a smile coming to his face and asked, What are you smiling at? Nothing. Don't lie. Just myself. Why? I feel right. And that's funny to you? Christine pressed. I never thought I'd feel right, Alec answered. Christine gave him a sympathetic look before Aaron gave him a hug and said, I like it when you're smiling. I like it too, Alec admitted before he started to look through the clothing with the girls. While his previous endeavor had humiliated him, he felt emboldened by his obvious passing amongst other women to let himself enjoy the moment. Rather than still being a passive participant, Christine and Aaron saw that Alec was selecting what he thought would look good on him. Oh, that's a pretty dress, Aaron said as she looked over the sheath dress with contrasting black, white and magenta stripes in Alec's hand. Alec nodded as he said, I love the etched pattern. That's a tropical pattern, Aaron explained as she looked at the magenta and white pattern overlaid on the black, mid-thigh length dress. Alec made a mental note of it before saying, I didn't need to know that to like it. Sassy, Christine teased. She's been full of sass lately, Aaron added. Get used to it, girls, Alec replied with a smile and a flick of his hands. Oh, you're getting a little full of yourself, Christine chided. You have only yourself to blame, Alec retorted. Is that right? Christine asked. Yep, you released the Kraken. Lias laughed at the reference that went over Aaron's head. Realizing it, Alec explained the phrase to the young woman. Aaron shook her head while she joked, I work with a bunch of dorks. Christine and Alec laughed at her response. Alec put up his hand as he said guilty, while he held up another dress with his other hand and fashionable, Aaron noted, approving the sheath dress with a bateau neckline. After perusing the racks for a few more minutes, Aaron and Alec headed for the fitting room. They talked on their way in before they parted to try on their outfits. Alexandra, let me see you, Christine called in as Alec tried on his three-quarter sleeve dress. Alec pulled at the ruching at the left waist as he emerged almost simultaneously with Aaron from the dressing stall. The two immediately beamed about the way the other looked in their outfits. Asterisk ruching at the left waist Christine seconded both of their opinions before she turned to Alec and said, You look like a model in that. Oh, please. No. I'm being serious, Christine said with a shake of head, almost in disbelief that Alec had made such a beautiful woman. I could just see Alexandra up on the catwalk, Aaron joked. Yeah. That would be something, Christine seconded. Let me give you a preview, Alec responded before he began to take long strides away from the girls. He peered over his shoulders and shot the girls a fierce look before he slowly dropped and pursed his lips as he blew the bemused girls a kiss. Way to work it, Christine joked. You don't have to tell me, darling, Alec teased while he sauntered back towards them with a more pronounced wiggle in his step. You're feeling good, Aaron noted. I'm feeling better than ever, Alec admitted before he stepped back into the stall to try on a few more outfits. He showed them off for the girls and gave his opinions on the outfits that Aaron and Christine were thinking about purchasing. Alec was amazed to see that the girls were taking his opinions on fashion seriously. 
I really am one of them, Alec thought with a smile once Aaron decided against a particular dress due to Alec's criticism of it. Alec felt a slight attraction to Aaron and Christine as they preened in the clothes they modeled beside him. He knew that they were pretty, but he was bored by it. He was more jealous that they picked certain outfits and dresses before he could. Once they settled on their clothing, they paid for it and headed to a discount shoe store in the mall. Alec walked in beside them and they parted ways to find the pairs of shoes they wanted before the others had a chance to get them first. Alec tried on shoe after shoe beside the girls before they brought their selections to the register. As the Alec and girls finished paying the cashier for their purchases, Aaron asked if they wanted to get lunch. I can eat, Christine responded. I'll go, Alec replied, feeling more comfortable in his new persona than he could ever recall feeling about being a man. Alec walked along with the girls to a chain establishment that was connected to the mall. They walked inside and were seated by the smiling hostess. Alec and the girls chatted while they looked over the menus before their waiter arrived. The waiter gave them all an inspecting look while he took their menus. The man made a joke as he talked with Alec. The girls laughed along with Alec before Alec gave him the order while the waiter's eyes focused on him. What was that about? Alec asked while the waiter walked away. He was hitting on you, Aaron answered. With you here? I'm not every guy's type, Aaron reminded Alec. I noticed that you didn't say that about me, Christine interjected. Well, you too, Alec hastily added. Too late, bitch. Too late, Christine said with a shake of her head. Don't hate her because she's beautiful, Aaron joked. The joke brought a smile to all of their faces before the waiter carried over their drinks. He lingered longer than necessary beside Alec, leaving little doubt in his mind that Aaron and Christine's beliefs were accurate. Alec was at a loss for what to do. He had never been able to bring himself to hit on a woman, let alone flirt with a man. As the waiter walked away looking disappointed, Christine asked, Why did you freeze up? I didn't know what to do, Alec admitted. You have to flirt. I've never done that, Alec admitted. Christine and Aaron gave him a sympathetic look before they started to tell him how to flirt. Aaron leaned across the table as she said, The first thing you've got to do when they engage is start talking. You've got to keep the conversation moving. Talking isn't flirting, Alec rejoined. It is when you flash that pretty white smile of yours and laugh at his jokes. What if they're not funny? If he's cute, they're funny, Aaron countered. If you don't laugh, you seem standoffish, and you've got to trick him into thinking he's in control. Men like to think that, Christine noted. When the chance comes, touch him lightly, Aaron added. Touch him? Alec asked, shocked by the idea that it was appropriate. It's not him touching you. You have to do a light touch. Like what? Like put a hand on his shoulder or on his hand, just a light touch, don't let it linger, Aaron explained. Always leave him wanting more, Christine noted while she raised her eyebrows. And draw attention to your body. Make him see more of what he wants. Like how? Like leaning back so he can see your rack, Aaron counseled. That's false advertising, Alec kidded. For now, Christine rejoined. Alec laughed a little knowing it was true, before he inquired, what else? You can play with your hair. Boys love long hair. Give him a compliment and definitely tease him, Christine added. How do you compliment a guy? Alec inquired. Tell him his hands are big. Big hands equal a big, Christine answered, smiling as she trailed off. But what if his hands aren't big? Tell them they are. They're going to be bigger than yours. Alec nodded as he gazed down at his small, thin hands. The waiter came back soon after and put the plates in front of each of them. Alec smiled at the waiter as he asked, Are those plates heavy? Not for me, the waiter responded with a smile. Well, you've got such big hands. The man laughed as he looked at his hands and said, I suppose. I like your pretty hands. These old things, Alec joked. Pretty hands for a pretty girl. The man replied as Alec's manhood swelled only to be thwarted by the device that was encasing it. The waiter's attention was soon drawn away from Alec as a woman asked for a refill of her drink. I've got to go, 
the waiter noted. Christine and Aaron laughed at Alec's first attempts at flirting. Aaron smiled while she said, not bad for a first-timer. You did better than he did, Christine added. Yeah, he was a little awkward, Aaron noted. Do you think he knows? Alec asked with some alarm. Not a chance. Guys are just stupid, Aaron answered. If you keep that up, he's going to ask for your number, Christine noted. I can't do that. Why not? Aaron asked. I don't want to give him a nasty surprise. How do you know he doesn't like Aaron? There's only so many that do, Alec retorted, cutting her off. You have to ask him to find out, Christine pressed. No. I rather like my teeth, Alec replied as he tapped the white teeth attached to his upper jaw. Don't be such a drama queen, Aaron responded with a shake of her head. That's the one queen I haven't been, Alec retorted to the girl's laughter. You can't spend the rest of your life alone, Aaron noted. I've spent most of it alone already, Alec replied. That was then, Aaron countered. Alec nodded before he said, I do hope to find the right guy someday. Alec paused as he realized what he had said. It had been unforced in his mind. He truly saw himself as being with only men in the future. He had never had any luck with women and never pursued them like other men. His sex drive was minimal as a man. He always pushed away the gay fantasies that came into his mind. The idea of being the girl in a relationship had long intrigued him. It was now more than intriguing, it was all-consuming. He wanted to find a man that loved him. He wanted to be some man's girlfriend and wife. It was not long after that realization that they finished their meal. The waiter flirted with Alec again as he left the check. Last chance, Christine kidded. No. I need to meet a man who knows what he's getting into, Alec replied, feeling that it was the only safe way for someone like him to date. The girls did not push Alec further before the tip was left and they made their way out the door. They went back to the car and drove back to Alec's apartment. Alec let them inside and they talked for a few minutes. After Aaron went to the bathroom, she and Christine said goodbye to Alec. They hugged and kissed Alec on the cheek before they started towards the front. As Aaron stepped out the apartment, Christine started out behind her. She paused before she turned on her heels and pivoted towards Alec. There's one last gift I wanted to give you. What? Alec asked. This, Christine replied as she removed the key to his chastity belt from her purse. Alec took it with a smile. Christine smiled back at him as she said, I don't think you need to go any further than you're willing to. Thanks, Alec replied as he felt relieved that he was regaining control of his manhood. Have a good night, Christine said with a smirk. Oh, I will, Alec responded with blushing cheeks. As Alec closed the door behind Christine he hurriedly pulled up his skirt. He forced down his panties and reached for the lock. He pulled it off and felt instant relief. Alec worked the device off his member and pulled up his panties before walking into the kitchen. He tossed the chastity device in the garbage with a laugh. Alec's eyes looked around his small kitchen. He nodded to himself and started to walk towards his bedroom. Alec removed his skirt and took hold of a pair of leggings to lounge around in for the rest of the day. Alec paused as he took the leggings in his hand. He knew that he did not have to put them on, no matter how comfortable they were for him to wear. The choice was now his. There was nothing forcing him to go forward with anything. His arm was no longer being twisted by the control he had surrendered to Christine. He was free to be his own man or woman. Alec grinned as tears ran down his cheeks. He sensed that the choice was his, but the more he contemplated it, the more he realized that there had never been any choice at all. The following Monday morning, Alec roused himself from bed. After showering and having breakfast, Alec pulled on his panties and stuffed his bra. Once his fingers stopped adjusting the straps, Alec pulled a by stretch, crepe, black mini dress over his head. His hands worked through the dress's long sleeves before he adjusted the dress's straight silhouette. Alec smiled as he looked down at his false bust. He was relieved that its artificialness was not able to be seen from beneath the dress's V-neck. After Alec placed a silver necklace around his neck, he put on complimenting silver rings and earrings. 
he then placed on his black, patent leather pumps and headed out the door for his car. Alec did not bother changing out of his heels before he started to drive to work, feeling that he had to get used to it at some point. While he thought he knew what he was in store for the Monday before, now, there was no doubt. Alec was determined to keep his head up. He was not going to let anyone walk all over him any longer. He was going to be his own woman going forward in a way that he had never let himself be as Alec. Alec strolled into work with his held high. He greeted people as he walked past them walking with his false chest out. He knew that he was cutting an entirely different image than in the past, but that was the point. As Alec settled in, he looked at the girls in the neighboring desks and said, Girls, I've got an announcement. You went back and got the cute waiter's number, Morgan joked, having already heard the story from Christine. You wish. Hey, I'm married. I have to live vicariously through you girls. You don't want that, Brianna noted. I wish I had what you have, Christine replied. I got a good one, Morgan admitted. Well, hopefully one day we all will, Alec added. The girls nodded before he said, now, as I was saying, Morgan. Oh, she's getting snippy, Morgan kidded. Must be on the rag, Aaron joked to the girls' laughter. Alec blushed in reply before he said, as I was saying, I made my first appointment with a gender therapist. What is that? Morgan asked. That's the doctor I need to sign off on all my medical treatments to complete my transition. Wow, that's great, Aaron exclaimed before being seconded by the other girls in the area. What treatments do you need? Morgan inquired. I need to get cleared to take pills to stop my testosterone, whatever small amount that is, and increase my estrogen. Can you just do that? No. You need a doctor's supervision. It's a difficult process. Yeesh, Morgan interjected. It's not easy becoming a girl, Alec advised. It wasn't easy for me, Morgan said with a laugh before she added, for you, it's got to be even harder. We'll be here for you, Aaron noted. That's right, Morgan seconded as Christine and Brianna nodded. Alec thanked the girls before they all got to work. Alec smiled to himself as he then began to draft the email to his co-workers for approval by his bosses. He had already cleared the idea of sending the email to further explain himself to his co-workers before they had sensitivity training. Alec took a sip of coffee as he began to type, Good morning, I hope this email finds you all doing well. I know that you are all aware of my changes that have been unavoidable to notice. It's not every day that one of your co-workers goes from wearing Oxfords to pumps, which is no doubt a relief to many of you. Many of you are probably irritated about the upcoming sensitivity training session you feel may be unnecessary or inappropriate. Still, I would hope that you could spare a few moments to read this email to explain to you why I am Alexandra. By now, you all know that I'm transgender. This is a fact that I've kept hidden. I was ashamed by my lack of masculinity and took refuge in hiding myself. I spent a long time trying to deceive myself as I remembered all the abuse my effeminacy had gotten me as child and teenager. It was not long ago that I decided that I can no longer continue to live the lie. I am no longer ashamed of what I am. I am free. I am sorry for deceiving you with my appearance before. I hope you can forgive me for that. I will no longer pretend to be someone I am not. What you see now is, and has always been, me. In short, I am a woman. I've always had the feelings that I was born to be a woman, that I should have been raised a girl and that I should be living as a girl. I did everything I could to hide from those thoughts and change them. No longer. Today, I am a woman, and I hope that you can accept that. At the least, I hope you can tolerate it. You may not like it, but please let it be. It's my life, not yours. Me living a lie may have been more comfortable for you, but I live with depression every day of my life that has finally lifted. Please note that I'm not confused. I was, but I am no longer. I am not sick, despite what some quacks may say. I'm not deluded. I am still a human with feelings, just like all of you. For those of you who call me Alexandra, even Alex, and who call me she, her or group me in with the girls, I thank you. 
I would ask that everyone else do so as well. I know that this may be difficult and even the most well-intentioned of you will make a slip up now and again. Some of that is my fault for deceiving you about who I was when we met. Despite my change in appearance, I am the same person I have always been. I have the same hopes and same dreams. I hold the same values and work ethic. Please do not treat me any differently than you did before you knew the truth. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to read this. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have, but please, keep it appropriate. We are, after all, all professionals here. Sincerely, Alexandra Prince Alexandra felt a weight come off her shoulders as she finished putting her truth in writing for the first time in her life. She was concerned about the reaction it would have, but felt she needed to do it. The email was soon cleared by her bosses and sent out to the rest of the office. Alexandra expected the worst, but she got back uniformly positive responses from those that responded. She figured that those that were put off by the email could be bothered to respond or were too smart to know that no good could come of putting their narrow-minded views in writing. Alexandra's fellow administrative assistants were impressed by the email. Christine smiled as she asked her, So, we were right? Alexandra grinned as she answered with a nod. Christine then got up to give Alexandra a hug. As they ceased their embrace, Alexandra turned to the other girls and said, This was not a choice. This is who I am. We're glad for you, Morgan replied. Alexandra thanked her before she said, I was really thinking this through yesterday. Once Christine and Aaron went home I had time to think. I thought about everything that happened. I could have stopped it at any moment. All I had to do was stand up for myself, but I let it happen. I let happen because it had to happen. I wasn't going to let myself get here without a push. You're welcome, Morgan joked with a laugh. Alexandra shook her head as the other girls laughed. She then continued, I thought about if I could go back to being Alec. Could I live the rest of my life pretending to be a straight man? I thought about what that would mean. I could not bear the thought of going back to being Alec. The thought of quitting made me ashamed. I was never a man. I could never let myself go back to being something I'm not. You go girl, Aaron said with a laugh. Anyway, I wanted to thank you all, Alexandra finished. It was our pleasure, Brianna replied before the other girls hugged Alexandra. As Alexandra finished the workday, more of her co-workers made their way over to her to talk about her transitioning. Some of the people who had been standoffish with her decided to go out their way to say that they accepted her. Some still treated her as a phantom, while others looked at her with scorn. Alexandra would not let them get to her though. She felt free. Her co-workers at the office saw the difference in Alexandra. She bore little resemblance in personality to the quiet boy they knew. She was louder and more personable as her shyness dissipated. Her innate kindness was no longer overlooked. The talent that had been hinted at by her resume sprung forth. The first time she pitched an idea, it went nowhere. The bosses did not listen to her. Alexandra was told that it was a chick thing by the other girls. Her female superiors made it clear to her that she had to understand that she would be taken less seriously than a man, given her gender. Well, I didn't give up being a quiet man to roll over as a woman, Alexandra retorted in response. The girls liked the response. They enjoyed that they had a new ally in the office fighting for the voice of women. That it was a former man made it powerful since the LGBT lobbying forces had fostered greater changes in their workplace than most had seen from other groups. Finally, Alexandra got Joel to listen to an idea as she cornered him. Joel was taken aback by the thoughtfulness of the proposal and Alexandra's ability to explain it. Good idea, Alexandra, Joel said with a smile. Thank you, sir. Joel nodded as he walked away, deciding to try the idea out. You're just going to keep pitching ideas, aren't you? Christine asked as Alexandra settled back in at her desk. It just feels like the thing to do. We can't make the world better without solutions, Alexandra answered. Joel, as well as Alexandra's other supervisors, were surprised by the success of Alexandra's proposal at first. 
It seemed like it was likely nothing but a little fluke, but she soon followed it up with another. Her eye for inventive solutions, however, was something that Joel was unwilling to overlook. He was eager to share it with his superiors when it became clear to him that it was more than beginner's luck. He wanted it known that he had spotted the diamond in the rough as he successfully sold his bosses on the idea that Alexandra's self-realization was a product of the work environment he fostered. Joel called Alexandra into his office with a chipper tone. The tone made Alexandra relaxed before she saw the company's regional human resources boss in the room. Her presence made Alexandra clam up before she smiled and shook his hand. She greeted the pensive-looking girl warmly before she said, I've been hearing some great things about you. Well, I hope they're all true, Alexandra responded while she sat and crossed her thin, black stocking-covered legs. So, I heard about your ongoing transition, and obviously we've always been supportive of you. Alexandra nodded before Cecile continued, well, it's part of my job to make sure that all of our employees are meeting their true potential. Alexandra furrowed her brow, not understanding where Cecile was going with her statement. She felt that she was meeting her potential for the first time in her life. Cecile explained further, we want to make sure that we're not wasting resources. We want our employees doing the most they can for our company and all of its clients. Alexandra nodded before Cecile noted, there's an opening in the city office for a client solutions analyst. You've got the right degree for it, and Joel tells me that you've certainly got the aptitude for it. Thank you, Alexandra replied, taken aback by the offer. This will be a promotion. You'd still be in a cubicle, but we think that you can work your way to head the department. You think people would listen to me? Cecile laughed as she said, I know that men have trouble taking orders from a woman, but that's their problem. Right, Joel? Right, Cecile, Joel answered the woman that worked closely with the female head of the region. I've also heard about your interpersonal skills. You try to diffuse personality conflicts. Well, I have an unfortunate wealth of experience with dealing with people that don't like me. Cecile gave him an understanding look before she said, I don't think that'll be as much of a problem in the city office. They work one floor under the regional office. It's a very liberal city. We have a number of LGBT employees and everyone gets along. Are there any teas? Alexandra asked. Not at the moment. We had one years ago, but she took a job in San Francisco. Alexandra nodded before she joked, so, I'd be completing the rainbow for the city office? Cecile laughed slightly as she said, Yeah, I think you'd be the color green. Oh, love that color. It's the color of money. Well, you'd be getting a substantial raise, Cecile noted. Alexandra smiled as she was excited by the prospect of a fresh start with the company. It would only be a 50-mile ride to see the friends that had helped her start her journey. She hated to leave them, but she knew it was an offer that was too good to pass up. Cecile and Joel stood up to congratulate Alexandra before they started out the door. Cecile asked if she could speak with Joel alone before Alexandra excused herself. Alexandra was excited as she went and told the girls about her promotion. The girls all got to their feet as they hugged and kissed Alexandra's cheek to congratulate her. One of the female bosses overheard the commotion and asked what was going on. Once Alexandra explained the situation, the woman congratulated her as well. If only you had done that all this as a man, you would have been promoted three times already, the woman added with a dejected look. I don't like male privilege, but I have to admit, it would have helped had I pushed the envelope. And now that door is closed, the woman reminded him. Nailed shut and set on fire, Alexandra said with a toothy smile and a nod. So, no regrets? Christine asked. No regrets.